For the first time in 4,000 years, the galaxy was at peace. The Arm had achieved its final victory, wiping out the malevolent core completely, and the last hundred years had seen a glorious period of rebirth and reconstruction. But now, rumors had surfaced of a terrifying core contingency plan involving a commander left dormant in the Ocelon system, a small cluster of planets at the galaxy's edge. Ordinarily, a single commander would pose no threat to the revitalized arm, but the rumors also told of an ancient alien artifact which the commander would be able to incorporate into a terrifying weapon, one capable of wiping out the entire galaxy in a single cataclysmic blow. A seasoned arm commander was dispatched to the Ocelon system to investigate the rumors, beginning on the watery world of Hydros.
of a core contingency plan had proven to be true. The Arm Commander had encountered recently constructed core units on Hydros. Though no evidence of any alien artifact had yet been found, the Arm would take no chances. Any possibility of galactic destruction was too much to risk. The core Commander would have to be found and destroyed immediately.
Corps forces were proving more tenacious than had been expected. Fighting was difficult on a world with no land masses, and the tremendous native sea serpents which struck without warning took their toll on the armed naval units. Moreover, it appeared that the Corps commander had been active for longer than expected, and had established a large floating base on Hydros. The base would have to be taken.
The core had been successfully wiped out on Hydros, but it was stronger and better established on the neighboring world, Lush. Newly developed hovercraft technology allowed core units to move easily across the rivers and bogs of the steaming and swampy planet, which gave them a decided advantage over the clumsier arm vehicles. The arm commander knew that on Lush, the capture and duplication of this technology was the key to a successful campaign.
Armed scientists had managed to reverse engineer the captured enemy hovercraft, allowing them to build new units on equal footing with the core. Now the armed commander wanted to push eastward. Advanced teams had spotted a glow emanating from the east, which gave weight to intelligence reports that the rumored alien artifact was indeed located somewhere on Lush.
flyby mission established that the glow in the eastern skies was coming from within a massive structure of unknown origin. This was surely the alien device which the Corps commander intended to use. It appeared to be some sort of beacon. The arm would have to capture it first. The survival of the entire galaxy was at stake.
armed scientists examining the alien beacon found that it operated using macro-entanglement principles similar to their own galactic gates. Adjustable focal points represented a tremendous leap in the technology. However, they also provided the theoretical possibility of initiating a chain reaction which could rapidly rematrix matter on a mind-boggling scale, causing a complete galactic collapse. This ultimate cataclysm was the goal of the Corps Commander. Before the scientists could devise a way to neutralize the threat of the beacon without destroying it, it was stolen by an ingenious team of Corps infiltrators posing as Muon analysis bots. The arm tracked the infiltration team to Temblor, third planet in the Ocelon system. The beacon had to be recaptured, before the core commander could make use of it.
Despite the constant earthquakes caused by the shifting plates of Temblor's surface, the Corps had managed to establish a sizable mobile base beyond one of the vaporous, seemingly bottomless pits near the northern striatic ridge. Corps units were marshaled around this base as the armed forces advanced. It would be a battle to remember.
mobile base on Temblor had been destroyed. Surviving core forces had made a strategic retreat to their northern stronghold. The surrounded core battalions quickly took defensive positions. The fighting would be intense, and the armed commanders suspected that the true intention of the stubborn defense was to buy time for the core commander to convert the alien beacon and complete an implosion device.
the Corps commander had retreated to Gelidus, outermost planet of the Asalan system. This was a glittering world of ice, frozen but far from still. Winds blew fiercely and unpredictably, driving tremendous storms which dropped hailstones as large as boulders, a rain of destruction for anything which lay below. But all dangers were secondary compared to the threat posed by the Corps commander and his terrible mission.
beset by core forces and battered by the nearly constant hailstorms on the frozen planet, the arm had nevertheless won a foothold on the ice flows of Gelidus. Core troops withdrew to the west, towards the mainland, with the arm in pursuit. The core was running out of room, but the arm was running out of time.
The Corps commander was sealed within a massive glacial fortress high in Gelidus' northern quadrant. He was cornered, but had reached his goal. The converted alien beacon was also housed in the fortress. Time was now the arm's greatest enemy. As the Corps commander worked to complete his doomsday preparations, and activate the device which would destroy the galaxy.
It was over at last. Struggling valiantly against wave upon wave of core shock troops, the armed battalions broke through in the nick of time. The ultimate disaster was averted. The core commander destroyed. The galaxy was safe once again. The armed commander stood triumphant in the remnants of the glacial fortress, surrounded by the quiet of the peace which would now perhaps reign forever. Perhaps.